Hey guys, what's up? This is uh, FF Camo 293, Five Car Camo 293. And uh, today we're going to do a tutorial on how to disassemble and completely gut a Motorola XTS 2500. Um, there's a few videos out there on YouTube about how I do this, but they're kind of old and, you know, uh, I recently had to do this to a couple of mine and there weren't as many helpful videos out there on how I do it and directions and whatnot. So I figured that today for, since I've got the extra time to do it and everything, I'd make a video for y'all on how to do this. So to take one of these apart, all you're gonna need, and before we keep on with the video, just as you're aware, uh, these are not the proper tools for doing this job. I highly recommend buying the Motorola I don't know what the model number is or anything like that, but the actual Motorola brand dehousing tool that they have. Um, if you do use these tools I have here, which is a large flathead screwdriver and a small, um, I think it's a jeweler's style tool, flathead screwdriver, a little bitty micro screwdriver, flathead. Um, if you use these tools, you run the risk of breaking the housings when you're pulling these things apart. So just be warned, if you don't have the proper tools, you could tear the radio up. So just be aware of that. Anyway, so today I'm going to show you how to dehouse this radio and take it apart using a large and a small flathead screwdriver. And this radio here is a parts unit. I bought this just for using the parts out of it. I've already pulled parts out and got what I needed from it to fix the other radios I have. Um, this is a, I think an AN model, XTS 2500. It does not work. It will not read through CPS. As you'll see, it's a non-functional radio. So, it's, there's nothing there that I can use. Will not read through CPS. Can't do anything with it for myself personally. So it's just a parts unit. But like I said, I got the parts I need out of it, so we're just gonna do this for demonstrational purposes. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take the battery off the radio, and I'm gonna try this one-handed, so we'll see how this goes. So I'm using my damn iPhone for taking this video. And I think this is a, where's the model number? Yeah, it's an AN model, 2500. The BN 2500s, are these right here. That's a BN series 2500. And so is this other one right here. I think it's a BN model. Yep, BN. So, anyway. So, take the battery off, throw it to the side. You don't need it right now. You're going to start by taking this radio apart very carefully gonna pull the volume knob off. The volume knob and the channel knob just pull right off. There's nothing to them. Channel knob off. The concentric three-way switch. If you put it, put it to the B position, it kind of helps to get it off. You just pry it off. It's not gonna hurt anything. I may set the camera down so I can do this because doing it one-handed does not really help at all. And if I ain't got no nails either to pry that thing off with, let's see something. There you go. Okay. You got the iPhone leaned up against the pot here on the table, so. There's your concentric switch. Put it to the side, you don't need it no more. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So, pull your volume knob off. Simple, easy, just pulls right off, pushes right back on. Now, to take this rail apart, you have, and I hope I'm showing you all the right thing. I'm sure someone on YouTube will correct me. There's a little die cast, little teeth right here. There's a groove, and of course my phone is not, there you go. There's a little groove and all that in there. 
You're gonna take the tip of your big flat head, stick it in there. You're gonna push down, and kind of pry. And do it very gentle and slow. Because if you don't do this very gently, you can tear the radio up and destroy that housing. You're going to kind of pull and pry on it just ever so much. First time it always doesn't always get it. There we go. All right, broke the seal and just gently pull out. Might need to get another grip on it. It's okay. There you go. All right. So, these knobs up here will push in, and this whole housing will pull out, but be very careful when you're pulling it out. There are two ribbon cables in here, and they are like right in here. And if you're not careful, you will damage those cables and you will destroy the radio. So do not yank on this pulling it out. Just gently, gently, just kind of wiggle it through it free. All right, see them cables? You do not want to destroy those. Okay, now you've got the radio separated from the actual um, housing. And you've got your actual radio's die cast housing there and all that, the actual radio itself and all that right here. So to take this apart, to separate from the case, there's a little lip right here. You're going to take your little flathead screwdriver, very gently pry it up. And like I said, I'm trying to do this in an awkward position. But you want to make sure that you get under that lip right there. There you go. And that wasn't very gentle, but Again, this is a parts radio. I'm not really worried about tearing it up. But for your radio that you're taking apart, you need to be very, very gentle. Because otherwise you will ruin your radio. Okay, so we got that cable undone. Now you've got this one right here. It needs to be pulled apart. Same process. Try to be gentle with it because you don't want to tear it up. Get your flathead in there. Just kind of... Right up there, you go like that. And now your radio housing is now separate from your actual radio itself, the RF board, and everything. So there's that. There's your radio. There's a channel knob, volume on and off, all the buttons and everything. All oh, that's right there. And then give you a better picture. These right here, those little flaps come up and down. And those are what you've got to get your screwdriver up into and flip up to release your ribbon cables. And then the same process for putting them back together, push them down. <coughs> so, there's your radio, it's separated now. Now, Pull the rest of these parts apart, okay? You're gonna start with, if you're wanting to just disassemble this rail and rehouse it. You've got this white bar right here, very gently. You're gonna pull your serving cable kind of up out of the way, like so. You're gonna take your little jeweler style tool here, and you're gonna just kind of pry it out of there. It just pulls out wheel. There you go. And just very gently just pull that on out. I forget what they call that, but it's got a proper name, I'm sure. Somebody will tell me on YouTube, I'm sure. Okay. That's a guard, I think, but there's your radio speaker. There's your screen. And then there's your keypad right here. And that metal plate right there is just like a um, like a shield. And you've got your ribbon cable here, and then this other ribbon cable. Um, take your jeweler's tool, 
And get that out of the way. So it's hard to see. It is very hard to see on camera, I know. But you've got four clips. You got two on each side, one right here, one here. And get this damn ribbon cable out of my way. Pardon my French because I'm going to say some really bad words. You've got a clip here, a clip right here. Okay. A lot of times in my experience with these, you can kind of pry on one very so gently. Yeah, that's gently all right. Just very gently, just pry that shield. And I might not be doing this the proper way. I've been doing this to all my radios, not had any problems. But there's your um, shields now out. And I almost forgot a very important step. You don't need to forget about it. This parts radio, it doesn't matter if it gets broken or not, again. But for your radio and your safety, and, there, and the sake of your radio, you've got a sticky right here, this tab. Pull that apart. And that's for your radio screen, the LCD. Undo that before you try to pry this little shield up. I made a boo-boo on that. Sorry, guys. And the same thing, a little sticky right here. This is just a little sticky part. Goes to the screen. You can just pull that up. So you're going to pull all that up. And the shield comes out. It normally comes out a lot harder than that. So just be aware of that. But that's your actual radio shield. Then here is your keypad. This is a dummy keypad. Came out of the XTS 1500. I just put it in there for show just to show y'all how it looks, looks and how they come out. Okay. So that's your keypad. And from what I understand with the XTS uh, 2500s, and I could be wrong, but I just swapped a 2500 that had a 1500 keyboard. This one exactly. Pulled the 2500 keyboard out of this one and put in a 2500 that had this keyboard. They're two different band radios and the other keyboard did work. So, from what I understand, you don't have to have a current certain model flash in your radio or a certain flash in it to have an actual limited keypad on your radio, but you gotta have an actual keypad that works. So, this keypad don't work, it's just a dummy. It doesn't do anything. So, just a little tip for y'all. Okay, next, and of course, here's your little rubber part of the keyboard. So, there's your keyboard go. For your screen, LCD, it's really, really easy to pull out. If I can get, I'm just trying to get this where y'all can actually, I'm having to bend my neck a certain way to be able to see and film and do this at the same time and show y'all what's going on. But you've got a little tab right here. And then you've got a little tab right in here. You can't see it on the video, I don't think. But there's a tab right here. You're going to pry ever so gently right here. Like so. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. Same thing for the other side. Gonna fit this in the screw where it fits just right. Pry it. Just gonna pry, and there goes your screen. And there's your LCD right here. So. Very easy, very simple to take out. Look into it. Next you have your ribbon cable and then the speaker. And this ribbon cable, especially where it's hooked up these, I have another video, I think Snarling Rabbit Dog on YouTube did a video on how to take these apart. He talked about how these little connectors here, I guess you, they're not connectors, but you know what I mean. These look like they're soldered on. They're not soldered on. They're little pins that go inside the radio housing. They're little pins that come out of these on the side that plug into this ribbon cable. For y'all, for the video, I will try to pry this out of here. 
But if you are not careful when you're prying this, you will break these pins off in this case and they'll render this housing unusable, which I don't care because I'm never gonna use it again. But, well, I think of, I might keep this one around for a little bit just to, I don't know, I might have a project I need for at some point, parts. But anyway, I might for a later video show on how to pull this out. But you take your little bass screwdriver like this and then you get in that groove right there and you carefully pry this out. And you very, very gently pry these off. You, you pry this cable and you kind of give a little tension on it and pull on it while you're prying with a little screwdriver. And there may be a better tool for doing that. I don't know if there is, maybe y'all can tell me. But this little screwdriver, you get this little flathead in there and you very so gently pry it up and it pops these loose. But if you're not careful, it will break these pins here. And I know from experience, I have broken one before. So that's how you do that. You pull that loose and then you've got this right here, this little, whatever this little soft thing is right here. This just pulls right out. Now we'll just pull right out. And then the last thing you gotta do, take this real apart to pull the speaker out. You've got a little shield guard right here. It goes around this little die cast shield here. It's got an arm here, it goes down. It's got an arm here, it goes up. And you want to very carefully push down on this. Push down like so. And then you pull it to the side. And then it would, it would release this guard right here. And then your speaker will fall out. Or you pull your speaker out and that's it. And so putting this radio back together is about the same process. Um, same thing I just showed y'all, but in reverse. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'm trying to keep this video short for y'all because it's going to take an hour and a half for me to upload it to YouTube if it's, it's almost 20 minutes now. But anyway, uh, if y'all got any questions or anything, please comment, email me, whatever. I'll see if I can help you out, tell you how to do some of this stuff. I'm still learning. I've been a ham operator for 10 years now. I'm a firefighter EMT and a dispatcher part-time. So I play with radios on a pretty regular basis and enjoy messing with them in my spare time and working on them for people. So if y'all got any comments, any recommendations, anything else you can think of, anything better to help out with taking these apart, any tips or tricks, be sure to leave it in comments and like and subscribe. Uh, thank y'all. Have a good day. Thank you.